Are you blindly following that 5W30 recommendation on your oil cap without understanding what it actually means for your engine? Here's something most drivers don't realize. That oil viscosity rating isn't one size fits all, and using 5W30 in the wrong situation can quietly destroy your engine over time. After working on thousands of engines and analyzing oil-related failures, I've seen a clear pattern. Drivers stick with 5W30 because it's common, but common doesn't always mean correct for your specific situation. Today, I'm breaking down exactly when 5W30 is wrong for your engine, what damage it causes, and what you should be using instead. Let's get into it. First, let's talk about what's actually happening inside modern engines. Your owner's manual specifies 5W30 for a reason, and that reason is tighter manufacturing tolerances than ever before. Modern engines are built with much tighter clearances between crankshaft journals and main bearings, purposely designed to use lower viscosity oils like 0W, 20, or even 0W16. These tight tolerances reduce internal friction and improve fuel economy, which helps automakers meet increasingly strict fuel efficiency standards. But here's where it gets critical. If your engine was designed for 0W20 and you're using 5W30 thinking thicker is better, you're making a costly mistake. Thicker oil may not flow quickly enough to protect modern engines with tight tolerances, and the pumping losses ultimately mean higher engine temperatures, premature sludge formation, and lower fuel economy. Your engine has to work harder to pump that thicker oil through narrow passages, creating heat and resistance that actually accelerates where rather than preventing it. Here's a real example from the shop. Customer brought in a 2018 Honda Accord with 80,000 miles. Engine was designed for 0W20, but he'd been using 5W30 for the past three years because his father told him thicker oil provides better protection. The variable valve timing system started throwing codes, the engine developed a rough idle, and fuel economy dropped from 32 miles per gallon to 28. Higher viscosity oil than required may not flow efficiently through narrow oil passages. This reduced flow can leave critical components under lubricated, increasing metal-on-metal -metal contact and accelerating wear. We drained that 5W30, switched back to the correct 0W20, and within two oil change intervals the VVT system stabilized and fuel economy returned to normal. But the damage from those three years of wrong oil, that's permanent wear on timing components that will shorten the engine's overall lifespan. Now let's talk about the opposite problem. Using 5W30 when your high mileage engine actually needs something thicker. If you've got over 75,000 miles and your engine was originally designed for 5W30, you might need to switch to a high mileage 5W30 or even consider 5W40 or 10W30 depending on your symptoms. As engines wear, bearing clearances increase. Thinner oils can bleed out more easily from the sides of bearings and other components, where heavier oil maintains the correct barrier between metal parts. I had a customer with a 2012 Silverado 165,000 miles, started noticing a tick at hot idle and using a quart of oil every 2,000 miles. He'd been loyal to 5W30 his entire ownership because that's what the cap said. We switched him to 10W30 high mileage synthetic, and that tick disappeared within one oil change. Oil consumption dropped to half a quart between changes. Why? Because at operating temperature, both 5W30 and 10W30 are 30 weight oils. They have the same hot viscosity between 9.3 and 12.5 centistokes at 100 degrees Celsius. But high mileage formulations contain seal conditioners and wear additives specifically designed for engines with worn components. Here's what manufacturers don't always make clear. That 5W in 5W30 only matters during cold starts. The 5 represents viscosity at 0 degrees Fahrenheit. So 10W30 is only thicker for roughly the 10 minutes it takes oil to reach operating temperature. After that, the oil behaves exactly like 5W30. This is why in warmer climates, switching from 5W30 to 10W30 on a high mileage engine can help without sacrificing cold start protection. But here's where people get confused and make expensive mistakes. They assume thicker is always better for protection, so they jump from 5W30 to 15W40 or even 20W50. This is engine suicide on modern vehicles. If you use oil that's too thick to flow quickly enough to fill the spaces between crank journals and main bearings while the engine runs, the oil won't form a consistent lubricating film, allowing metal-to-metal -metal contact and wear. I've torn down engines where owners used 20W50 thinking they were providing extra protection. The bearing surfaces looked like they'd been sandblasted because the oil was too thick to circulate properly at operating speed. Now let's address the fuel economy impact because this directly affects your wallet. 
Using 5W30 instead of specified 0W20 typically reduces fuel economy by 2 to 4%. That might not sound like much until you calculate it over a year. If you drive 15,000 miles annually and your car normally gets 30 miles per gallon, Dropping to 29 miles per gallon from wrong oil viscosity costs you an extra 17 gallons of fuel per year. At current prices, that's roughly $60 wasted annually, plus the accelerated wear on your engine. Here's the situation with turbocharged engines, and this is critical. Modern turbo engines run hotter and under higher stress than naturally aspirated engines. If your turbocharged engine specifies 5W30, it's engineered for that exact viscosity at operating temperature. Using thinner oil like 0W20 in a turbo engine designed for 5W30 can lead to inadequate film strength under boost pressure. The oil film breaks down under extreme heat and pressure, allowing bearing contact in the turbo and engine. Conversely, using 5W40 when 5W30 is specified can restrict oil flow to the turbo's high speed bearings, causing oil starvation and premature turbo failure. Turbocharged engines demand precise oil viscosity. Don't deviate without engineering justification. Let's talk about climate because this changes everything. In extremely cold climates where temperatures regularly drop below negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit, 5W30 flows more easily at startup than 10W30, reducing friction and wear during cold starts. But if you live in hot climates like Texas or Arizona and your engine has over 100,000 miles, staying with 5W30 when you could benefit from 10W30 high mileage oil means you're getting less protection when your engine is under the most stress, which is at full operating temperature under load. Here's a common scenario that costs people thousands. Driver has a 2015 vehicle with variable valve timing, engine designed for 5W20. They read online that thicker oil provides better protection, so they switch to 5W30. Within six months, check engine light appears. Engines with variable valve timing systems rely on precise oil pressure to adjust camshaft timing. Using the wrong viscosity can interfere with VVT solenoid operation, leading to rough idling, poor acceleration, and reduced efficiency. VVT solenoids are calibrated for specific oil flow rates, too thick and they can't actuate properly. The repair, new VVT solenoids, possible camshaft damage, and repair bills starting at $800 and going up to $2,500 depending on the engine. Now here's when 5W30 is absolutely the right choice. If your owner's manual specifies it, if your engine has under 75,000 miles, if you drive in mixed temperature climates, and if you don't have oil consumption or pressure issues, stick with 5W30. It's engineered specifically for your engine's tolerances, oil pump capacity, and cooling system design. Modern 5W30 synthetic oils provide excellent protection across a wide temperature range. 5W30 provides a balance of cold weather fluidity and high temperature protection, which is why it's the most widely used and recommended viscosity. But you need to switch away from 5W30 in these specific situations. First, if your owner's manual actually calls for 0W20 or 5W20, and you've been using 5W30 thinking it's close enough. It's not. Switch immediately to the correct specification. Second, if your engine has over 75,000 miles and you're experiencing increased oil consumption, more than half a quart between changes, consider switching to high mileage 5W30 which has seal conditioners, or moving to 10W30 high mileage if you're in a warm climate. Third, if you're experiencing hot idle tick or slightly low oil pressure on a high mileage engine over 150,000 miles, 10W30 or even 5W40 might be appropriate depending on your climate and manufacturer specifications. Fourth situation, if you drive in extreme heat with frequent towing or heavy loads, and your engine is past 100,000 miles, you may benefit from the next viscosity grade up. But verify your owner's manual first. Some manuals actually list multiple approved viscosities for different operating conditions. And fifth, if you have an older diesel engine or classic car built before 2000, those engines were designed with wider tolerances and often run better on 10W30 or 15W40 rather than modern 5W30. Here's what you absolutely should not do. Don't switch oil viscosity based on internet advice without understanding your specific engine design. Don't assume thicker is always better. Don't use diesel rated 15W40 in modern gasoline engines unless specifically approved by your manufacturer because the additive packages are different and can damage catalytic converters. And don't ignore oil consumption or pressure warning lights hoping thicker oil will solve the problem. That's a symptom of mechanical issues that need diagnosis, not a band-aid fix. The correct approach is simple. Check your owner's manual for the specified viscosity. If you're within that specification and your engine has low mileage, stay with it. If you have high mileage and experiencing consumption or pressure issues, 
consider high mileage formulations in the same viscosity first, then move to the next grade up only if approved for your temperature range. And if your engine was designed for thinner oil like 0W20, never go thicker without manufacturer approval. Here's the bottom line. 5W30 isn't universally wrong, but it's wrong in the wrong application. Using it in an engine designed for 0W20 causes VVT problems, increased wear, and fuel economy loss. Using it in a high mileage engine that needs 10W30 or 5W40 leads to oil consumption, lower pressure, and accelerated bearing wear. The key is understanding what your specific engine needs based on its design, mileage, and operating conditions, not just grabbing whatever's on sale at the auto parts store. If this information just saved you from expensive engine damage, hit that like button right now. Drop a comment with your vehicle make, model, year, and current mileage, and tell me what oil you're using. I'll respond with specific advice for your situation. And if you want more straight talk about engine maintenance that actually protects your investment instead of following myths, subscribe to this channel. Next week, I'm exposing the truth about oil change intervals. The 3,000 mile myth is costing people money, but so is extending too far. I'll show you exactly how to determine the right interval for your specific engine and driving habits. Hit subscribe so you don't miss it. Remember, the right oil in the right engine at the right time is what makes engines last. Everything else is just guessing.